Welcome to Maths Companion. Let us recall what we have learned in the last video. If two chords A, B and C, D intersect within the circle at P, then P A into P B equal to P C into P D. Or, if two chords of a circle intersect within the circle, then the product of the parts of the two chords are equal. If two chords of a circle intersect within the circle, then the rectangles formed by the parts of the same chord have equal area. There was a homework. Let us take the answer. In the picture, chords A, B and C, D of the circle are extended to meet at P. Prove that the angles of triangle A, P, C and triangle P, B, D formed by joining A, C and B, D are the same. Prove that P A into P B equal to P C into P D. Prove that if P B equal to P D, then A B D C is an isosceles trapezium. Let us take one by one. First of all, we have to prove that the angles of triangle A P C and triangle P B D are same. For that, let us join A C and B D. Now, A B D C is a cyclic quadrilateral. And this is an outer angle of the cyclic quadrilateral. We know any outer angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the inner angle at the opposite vertex. So this angle is equal to angle at C. Or we can say angle C equal to angle DBP. In the same way, this is another outer angle. It is equal to the inner angle at the opposite vertex which is the opposite vertex of D, A and this is the inner angle at A. Therefore, angle A equal to angle B, D, P. Now look at triangle A, P, C and triangle P, B, D. Angle P is common for both the triangles. That means the three angles of triangle A, P, C are equal to the three angles of triangle P, B, D or the angles of these two triangles are same or equal. Now let us look at the second part of the question. We have to prove that PA into PB equal to PC into PD. We have seen that these angles are equal and these are another pair of equal angles. And we have seen that the angles of triangle APC are equal to angles of triangle PBD. That means the triangles are similar. When two triangles are similar, the sides opposite to equal angles are proportional. That means the ratio between the sides of equal angles are same. Now look at angle C, which is the side opposite to angle C in triangle APC, that is PA. This angle is equal to angle C which is the side opposite to this angle in triangle PBD, that is PD. What is the ratio between these two sides? PA is to PD or PA by PD. Now take another pair of equal angles. These two angles are equal. The side opposite to this angle is PC and the side opposite to this angle is PB. The ratio between the sides is PC is to PB or PC by PB. These ratios are equal. That means PA by PD equal to PC by PB. Now when we cross multiply, we get PA into PB equal to PC into PD. Now let us look at the third part of the question. We have to prove that if PB equal to PD, then ABDC is an isosceles trapezium. We have seen that PA into PB equal to PC into PD. Suppose PB equal to PD, then what happens? PB and PD are equal, so we can cancel PB and PD from both sides. Or when you take PB on the other side, we get PA equal to PC into PD by PB. If PD and PB are equal, PD by PB equal to 1 because they are same. Therefore, we get PA equal to PC into 1 or PA equal to PC. 
anyway we can say pa equal to pc when pb equal to pd now look at triangle apc pa and pc are equal therefore it is an isosceles triangle therefore the angles opposite to equal sides are equal opposite to this side is angle c opposite to this side is angle a therefore angle a equal to angle c now look at ABDC, it is a cyclic quadrilateral. The opposite angles are supplementary. Therefore, angle A plus angle D equal to 180 degree. But angle A and angle C are equal. Therefore, we can replace angle A by angle C. Then we get angle C plus angle D equal to 180 degree. That means sum of these two angles is 180 degree. These are a pair of co-integer angles formed when the sides AC and BD are intersected by the line CD. They are supplementary means these two lines AC and BD are parallel. So we can say AC and BD are parallel. So in quadrilateral ABDC, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So it is a trapezium. Now let us look at the other pair of opposite sides A, B and C, D. Let me take A, B. It can be written as P, A minus P, B. That is A, B equal to P, A minus P, B. But we have seen that P, A and P, C are equal and P, B and P, D are equal. So let me replace P, A by P, C and P, B by P, D. So I can write this is equal to P, C minus P, D. Now look at this picture. What is PC minus PD? PC minus PD. That is equal to CD. So we can write AB equal to CD. That means the other pair of opposite sides are equal. Therefore, it is an isosceles trapezium. Today, let us learn the remaining part of the section 2 codes. We know when two codes A, B and C, D intersect within the circle at P like this, then P A into P B equal to P C into P D. Suppose one of the codes is a diameter. Diameter is the longest code or it is the code which passes through the center. And suppose the other is perpendicular to the diameter. Then how will be the figure? The figure will be like this. A B is a diameter and C D is a code perpendicular to A B. Again these two are codes, they intersect within the circle at P. Therefore we know P A into P B equal to P C into P D. The perpendicular drawn from the center to a code bisect the code. Here A B is perpendicular to C D. Since A B is the diameter, it passes through the center. So we can consider AB as the perpendicular drawn from the center to this code CD. Therefore, the diameter AB bisects the code CD. That means the length of PC and PD are equal. Since PC and PD are equal, we can replace PD by PC. Then we get PA into PB equal to PC into PC. And we know PC into PC is PC square. Therefore, we can say PA into PB equal to PC square. That is PA into PB equal to PC square. That means the product of the parts into which a diameter of a circle is cut by a perpendicular code is equal to the square of half the code. This is a very important result. Sometimes it may be asked like this. In the figure, AB is a diameter and PC is perpendicular to AB. Prove that PA into PB equal to PC square. First of all, let us take the figure. Let us complete the circle and extend CP to D. Since AB and CD are two codes, we know PA into PB equal to PC into PD. The perpendicular from the center to a code bisect the code. Given that AB is perpendicular to CD and since AB is the diameter, it passes through the center. So AB is the perpendicular through the center to the code. Therefore, 
ए बी बाई सिक्स सी डी और द लेंथ ऑफ पी सी एंड पी डी आर ईक्वल सिंस पी सी एंड पी डी आर ईक्वल वी कैन रीप्लेस पी डी बाई पी सी इन दिस इक्वेशन देन वी कैन राइट पी ए इंटू पी बी ईक्वल टू पी सी इंटू पी सी और पी ए इंटू पी बी ईक्वल टू पी सी स्क्वायर टिक ए सेमी सर्कल एंड ड्रॉ ए डायमीटर Mark a point P on it and draw a perpendicular from P. Let it meet the semicircle at C. We know P A into P B equal to P C square. Let me make a rectangle with sides P A and P B. For that, let me keep P A as the length and extend the line P C. Now. Let us take the length of PB on this perpendicular line. For that, put the compass at P and taking radius equal to the length of PB, draw an arc. Let it meet the perpendicular at S. Now PB and PS are equal. Now let us draw a rectangle with PA and PS as adjacent sides. What is the area of this rectangle? Area of the rectangle is length into breadth. That is P A into P S. But P S and P B are equal. Therefore, the area of this rectangle can be written as P A into P B. Now let me draw a square with side P C. For that, let me extend P B at first. Now take the length of P C on it. For that, put the compass at P. Take PC in the compass and draw an arc. Let it meet this line at T. Now PC and PT are equal. Now once again, take the length of PC in the compass and draw arcs from T and C. Let the arcs intersect at R. This is the fourth vertex of the square. Now join TR and CR. Now what is the area of this square? One side is PC. Therefore, area of this square is PC square. We know PA into PB equal to PC square. That means area of this rectangle and area of this square are equal. How is this rectangle formed? This rectangle is made using these two parts of the diameter as sides, and this square is made using this length of the perpendicular as side. And now we have seen that the areas of this rectangle and this square are equal. That means the area of the rectangle formed of parts into which a diameter of a circle is cut. By a perpendicular chord is equal to the area of the square formed by half the chord. This idea is very important. We can apply this in different situations. For example, we can use this to change a rectangle into a square of the same area. Look at this picture. Suppose we have to draw a square having the same area of this rectangle. Suppose PA and PB are equal to the length and breadth of this rectangle. Since PA into PB equal to PC square, if we draw a square with side PC, its area will be equal to the area of this rectangle. Let us see how to do it by taking an example. Draw a rectangle of width 5 cm and height 3 cm. Draw a square of the same area. We have to draw a rectangle of width 5 cm and height 3 cm. That means we have to draw a rectangle of length 5 cm and breadth 3 cm. For that, let us draw a line of length 5 cm at first. Now take 90 degree at A and draw a line. Mark a point D 3 cm away from A. Then the length of AD is 3 cm. 
Now take 90 degree at P and draw another line. Mark a point Q 3 cm away from P on it. Join PQ and QD. APQD is the required quadrilateral of length 5 cm and breadth 3 cm. Now we have to draw a square of the same area. For that, let us extend AP at first and take the length of PQ on it. Now we have to draw a semicircle with AB as diameter. For that we need to find the midpoint of AB. For that let us take more than half of AB in the compass and draw arcs on both sides. Now put the compass at B and taking the same radius draw arcs on both sides. Mark the points of intersections. Join them. This is the perpendicular bisector of AB. It passes through the midpoint of AB. Let it be O. Now put the compass at O and taking OA as radius, draw a semicircle. Now extend PQ to meet the semicircle at C. Now taking PC as one side, we can draw a square. For that extend PB at first and take the length of PC on this line. Let it be R. Now taking PC in the compass, draw arcs from R and C. Mark the point of intersection. This is the fourth vertex of the square. Let it be M. Join RM and CM. PA into PB equal to PC square. Therefore, the area of this rectangle and area of this square are equal. Let us recall what we have learned today. AB is a diameter and PC is perpendicular to AB. Then PA into PB equal to PC square or the product of the parts into which a diameter of a circle is cut by a perpendicular code is equal to the square of half the code. The area of the rectangle formed of parts into which a diameter of a circle is cut by a perpendicular code is equal to the area of the square formed by half the code. Now there is a homework. In the picture, a line through the center of a circle meets a code of the circle. What are the lengths of the two pieces of the code? I will be back with the remaining part. Till then, bye.